Hey YouTube, this is my first video ever. Uh, I just basically wanted to talk about like Lakers and the with the coaches and stuff like that. Um, I don't want to do any editing and like I mean obviously this is you know webcam to YouTube. But um, anyway, as far as the coaching thing goes, I was really interested with Mike D'Antoni as the pick. Um, I think. It's an interesting selection because you know he's got a really up paced tempo. I think people want to see that. They they want to see the Lakers scoring 100 points a game and stuff like that. But uh, I really don't. I just I'm not sure if it'll work. Uh, the Antonio system, you know, they really thrived under. You know, I think obviously he was picked because of Steve Nash. Uh, Nash was. You know, his point guard you know, the Phoenix Suns years back in Nash's all-star days. Um, I honestly was kind of even wondering if Nash could even perform at an all-star level in a half-court system because if you look at his career, he got a lot better in his um, all-star days. Like with the Phoenix Suns because of the up, up style, like tempo and stuff like that. Um, I mean, I'm sure he could. He's a smart player. He's a good point guard, good shooter. But, you know, I, he t obviously thrives in that kind of system. The one thing I'm really curious about, though, is Dan Antonio's system seems to kind of favor elite point guards dash big men. Um, you know, they if you look at the Phoenix Suns years, they had Steve Nash, Stoudemire, Sean Merriman, um, or Marion, and like that. You know, they they kind of had just just subpar wings. You know, guys that would shoot, play a little defense, um, and that's. Like, that's just the way the systems have always been. And in New York, you know, his last coaching, you know, last coaching thing was in New York, his stint. And he, he did fine with, with a style like that. You know, with Ray Felton, who he kind of ran a similar system at, like that at UNC. Uh, you know, Mario Stoudemire. And then they added Carmelo Anthony to the mix. And things got more complicated. You know, it's, it's just, you know, he basically got voted off the island by his own team. Um... And, you know, he, he's winged in was like Danilo Garnari, you know, kind of a, just a guy who'll sit out there and get you 15 points a game, shoot threes, solid player, can do a half-court offense. But I'm just wondering if Kobe can thrive with D'Antoni as a coach, you know, or, or if, if D'Antoni can have a system with a dominant wing player. Like, I don't know. That's just never – that doesn't seem like that's really part of the system ever. Um, I would say I think Kobe's a different player than Carmelo. Kobe, I think he's a better distributor, distributor of the ball, you know, Carmelo's a gifted scorer. And, I mean, Kobe is too, but, I mean, Carmelo can just do some crazy stuff. But, um, you know, Kobe can kind of do – he can kind of play off other people. He can kind of let, or let players play off of him. So that that's one thing that could help. Uh, I still find it a little odd that Phil Jackson won the job and didn't get the job. You know, he's a proven winner. I think he's had 13 titles, two as a player. You know, I think – I don't know, what's six or – wait, six, three, three, and then two. Okay, so I mean, anyway, I, th I think he said 13. I remember him saying he was retiring on a weird number or something like that. But, um, maybe it was 11, I can't remember. Either way, he's won a lot. And, uh, I think it was odd that they didn't go with him. Obviously, Kobe wanted him. But I think maybe what Coach Chuck was going for was he thought maybe if this system can work now, that they can recruit players for the future because they want to play under Dan Tony in this system. That's what, you know, and, you know, Phil Jackson, he'll probably just do this and go back into his retirement. And they'll start right back at square one. So I think that Cup Check's looking at something that he can go forward with. Um, I think the Mike Brown thing, I think they maybe should have given him a little bit more time if they were going to stick with him anyway. Like what Magic said, I'm not sure he was ever the right man for the job. You know, I think, but, he, you know, he kind of had a disclaimer before the season started. He said, you know, wait till January for this thing to really start clicking. And, you know, I kind of feel like they should have given me a month or at least a month and a half, you know, to see some progress like I mean I understand what the, I think the Prince's style was a little weird because I've heard that's for us that's I've heard that's a style for teams that don't have a lot of talent and they have a lot they have a ton but I think that just I, I guess what coach X is probably thinking is you know this thing could literally be this year or next year at, you know Kobe and Nash are at the end of their careers we don't have time to wait especially with the White's contract thing up in the air 
So he wants to win now. I can kind of see that. But at, at the same kind, same time, though, I think kind of contradicts. I think Phil Jackson's more ready to win now. So I'm, I guess maybe he's just trying to go for the best of both worlds. Maybe he thinks that now and the future is like Dan and Tony. Anyway, I love talking sports in the comment. You know, if you're watching this video, please put stuff in the comment box. Tell me your opinions. Uh, I love to do that more than anything. That's why I started YouTube in general. Was you know I used to comment. On, you know, I had another account. I comment on people's stuff. But anyway, um, please comment. I'd like to hear your opinions. And uh, until next time.